Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Sorry for the huge delay in the April security update vid, but uh, here it is now. So I guess we'll get started right away. There's nothing too special about this one. So as usual, we're going to need to download a couple things. First off is the latest version of the SDK platform tools. Now just download the one that is right for your operating system here. And also take note that as long as you have gotten the platform tools after December 2017, you probably don't need to download the new ones or download it again. So you can use the same ones that you've already used before uh, as long as it is the latest version. Next up you want to download the Pixel 2 or 2XL factory image. So you can go over on the right hand side on the contents bar and download the latest version for your Pixel 2. Now you can see this one or April has two factory images that you can use, one called OPM2 and one called OPM4. Now obviously the latter one, OPM4, is only for TELUS or KUDO carrier users only. So if you're not using TELUS or you're not on KUDO, then you can just flash the OPM2 version rather than OPM4. So just download the one that is most appropriate for you and your situation. So I've downloaded the OPM2 build of the April security update. Next, you'll want to download the latest version of Magisk. You can choose either the mainstream version or the beta version of Magisk, it doesn't really matter. Just click on the orange download button or download link there. And last but not least, you want to download the latest version of TWRP, uh, just in case if you don't have it. So just go over to the download section for your, your device model, and I'll have a link to the Pixel 2 XL's version down below as well. But for example, uh, if you just want to boot TWRP to reroute your phone using Magisk, then all you need to download is the just the image. But if you plan on installing TWRP to the boot partition or the boot image, then you'll need to download, of course, the TWRP installer zip file as well. So I've downloaded both, and everything is in this folder here. So by the end of all this, you should have downloaded five things. First up is the platform tools zip, and then we have the factory image. Then we have our TWRP images and flashable zip. And last but not least, we have our version of Magisk that we've chosen to download. So once you have all those things, we need to go over to our device to fix up a couple of things before we continue updating. Now, as usual, for a precaution, you want to disable all substratum overlays. Now, this is just in case one of them has an incompatibility with the new version of the, for example, I guess the most common one would be the system UI or the Android system. So just go over to the Manager tab, and you can select all overlays, press the Overlay fab, and then tap on Disable Selected. You don't have to uninstall them, you just need to disable them. So you might want to reboot your phone as well after this, just to make sure everything has been unloaded. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so once your phone has booted back up, we can now pretty much begin the updating process. So that'll start off by copying over the Magisk zip file and of course the TWRP installer zip file to your device if you haven't already. So all you need to do is just copy those two zip files that we're going to flash over to your phone. And of course the TWRP installer is actually optional in case you don't want to install TWRP, which is what I'll be doing. But I'll be showing you at least how to reroute and also when to flash the TWRP installer. Once you've copied over everything, now we can start by extracting our platform tools. Now if you've already extracted these or you have them added to your path environment variable, then you don't need to do this. You can just pretty much go ahead and start extracting the factory image and flash that. But in case you haven't done so already, what you want to do is open up the platform tools zip and then open up the platform tools folder inside. And then what you want to do is select the ADB EXE, the Win API DLLs, Fastboot EXE and the libwin pthread dash one. Now if you don't plan on erasing anything, and I don't think we'll need to, you don't need to extract the make f2fs or the 2fs exe and configuration files below. So just these five files will be okay for now. Just extract that into your Android folder, and then we can close the zip file. Next up we'll want to start extracting the stuff from the factory image. So we're going to go ahead and open up the factory image here, and then open up the folder inside. What we're going to do is extract the bootloader radio and image zip just like that okay that's it and we can close that once you've done all that we can reboot our phone into the bootloader 
And to do that, we're going to go over to our device, just hold the power button and then tap on restart. And as soon as the spinner freezes or the screen goes black, you want to hold the volume down button. And our phone will reboot into the bootloader like that. Give it a couple seconds and keep holding the volume down button until you see the bootloader screen. Once you've done that, you can let go. And then we're going to go ahead and open up a terminal window or a command prompt window or PowerShell if you like that. And we're going to start the flashing commands. So again, I'll be using my console emulator just because it's easier to see for a lot of people. What we're going to do is test if our device is being connected successfully to fastboot and that it's in the bootloader and our computer detects it. So we're going to type in fastboot devices and you can see it will return our serial number and the mode that it's currently in, which is fastboot, which is good. And what we want to do next is um, go ahead and flash the bootloader. So I'm going to type in fastboot flash bootloader, leave a space in the end, and drag in the bootloader image. Now I'll take this time to show you a couple of things on the screen right now, and that is a different way of flashing the images to different partitions and if they are on a different slot. Remember, because we are working with a pixel device, it has both the A and B slots for uh, seamless updating. Now currently we need to be able to flash, well it's recommended that we flash the bootloader on our current slot, which in this case is slot A, you can tell by that line on the bootloader, and then we need to flash it to our other slot, which is alternatively slot B. Now in another example, if say your boot slot is currently set to B on your device, please double check it. You can flash to the other slot by also calling it slot A. So I'll show you that now, and if you don't understand the images that I've put up on the screen. So we need to flash the bootloader on the other slot, or slot B in my case. I'm going to type in fastboot flash bootloader underscore other. Leave a space below, and then drag in the same bootloader image and press enter. And that'll update the other partition, so our B partition. Likewise, if your boot slot is currently set to B, using the fast boot, or sorry, bootloader other partition will flash the bootloader to slot A. Now, hopefully you get that now. We're going to go ahead and reboot our phone back into the bootloader by typing in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. And then our phone should reboot back into the bootloader soon. And once it has, we're going to continue flashing the radio image. We'll do the same thing. Type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space in the end and drag in our radio image. Hit enter. Once that's done, I'll show you a different way to flash the opposite slot. I'm going to type in fastboot flash radio underscore B. So you can also just dictate which slot you want to flash to directly. And we're going to drag in our radio image. And I forgot a space. like so. And of course you can still type radio underscore other. So this is just if it doesn't work out the first time. You can manually specify which slot to flash. And now we're going to reboot back into the bootloader once more, like so. You can press the up arrow key and down arrow key to access previous commands as well, if you didn't know. And now we're going to go ahead and update our images using the image zip and the fastboot update command. Now if this doesn't work for you, you can still flash the images manually, but I would really try to get this to work even though it may not be working for you currently. Uh, otherwise you can have a look at one of my old videos, which I'll link down below as well. That'll show you how to manually flash the individual files within the image zip file that you've extracted. So we're going to do the update command. I'm going to type in fastboot, double dash, so two dashes, and then type in the word skip, and another dash, and then reboot, like so. And then from there, you want to type in update and then leave the space in the end and drag in our image zip file. Hit enter and this will start extracting all the images inside the image zip file out onto our computer and then flash them one by one to our device and we'll also do some, I guess, sanity checks before it does so as well. Now the cool thing about the skip reboot is that it'll prevent a reboot from happening from a command that would normally invoke a reboot upon its completion and the fastboot update command is one of those commands. So this will save us the hassle from having to hold the volume down button on our device just so it can get back in the bootloader. So right now it's flashing the system to our A slot and then it's going to flash the system underscore other image to the B slot. 
and we'll see that happen as well. I'm going to fast forward this until it finishes and then we're going to go into TWRP and reroute our device. Alrighty, now that's done, we're going to go ahead with the rerouting process. Now this is where you can slightly diverge a little bit, but I'll explain after we boot into TWRP, which should be for everyone. So right now, we're using our TWRP image file, we're going to type in fastboot, boot, and leave a space after the word boot, and then drag in our bootable TWRP image. This will temporarily upload the image to our device and get our phone to boot the TWRP image without making any modifications, which is very useful for, uh, I guess, my next video, which it will be next month, um, which will be showing you how to update using an OTA that you've downloaded on your device. Because I know some people have commented that they don't want to be downloading, uh, I guess, a couple gigs worth of factory images every month just to update the device. Uh, what if it's only you know a couple hundred megabytes via the OTA system? And uh, this is our solution. So. Now we're met with two options that we can choose here. Please consider this, I guess, carefully, although it's not hard to, I guess, reset the stage and choose a different way if you choose to. So first up, you want to decide whether you want to only have root and you don't necessarily need TWRP to be installed on your device, which is, uh, I guess, my scenario. I don't really care. Either way, it works for me. Or if you want to have TWRP on your device without needing a computer with you all the time, then I'll also show you how to do that. But first up is for the people who want to install TWRP onto the device. So if you want that, follow my instructions now. Tap on install and then locate the TWRP installer that you copied over earlier. Tap on that and swipe to confirm the flash. And once you've confirmed the flash, then you can do what I'm going to do now. So if you want TWRP installed, just flash it. And then, of course, everyone else will probably want to reroot their device. So then, whether or not you would want to flash the TWRP installer, just head over to where your Magisk zip is and flash that. Excellent, so we're done now. I'm going to tap on Reboot System. And once again, I'll just make it extra clear. If you did not flash the TWRP installer, you will not have TWRP installed permanently onto the boot image. But this means you'll be able to take OTAs a bit more easily uh, using Magisk as well. So we won't be essentially needing a computer for any of our future updates if you choose to do it like how I'm doing, leaving the boot image intact and also leaving the system image intact as well. Uh, very important. So don't make any modifications to the system or the vendor partition, I guess, or image. And definitely don't make any modifications to the boot image. So we'll see how this works next month. Um, and also we'll be seeing a second developer preview of Android P, which is exciting. So I'm going to wait for our phone to boot up here, and then we'll just double check that we're still rooted. Now I guess uh, on another hand, passing safety net is, um, I guess, not exactly going to be forever. Now one day you might find that you're not passing safety net, and you know, that's, that's just how it is. You wouldn't want to root your phone if you needed safety net or you depended on it a hundred percent you know it just doesn't really make much sense so you can't really get angry or upset if safety net um, I guess is able to detect Magisk and Magisk isn't able to bypass it in a way so I guess we'll just check out uh, root access which we should be able to do in Magisk manager as well but you know what the heck we'll just go to the root of our device here and you can see that worked out well let's just open up the Magisk manager and have a look and uh, we have 16.3 installed. And if I turn on my internet, then we'll see that we're on the latest version as well. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'm um, sorry for the delay as well. The Nexus 6P version of this video should be coming out, I don't know, hopefully over the weekend uh, when I'm a bit more free. But um, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Or better yet, visit my Discord. Uh, we got you know a couple people hanging around I guess willing to chat and whatever. Um, but yeah, highly recommend that you join us on Discord. Uh, just makes it so much easier to chat with me and all that. I mean, it's just it's just much better than YouTube's comment system as of now. But if you just want to leave a quick message, the comments section is the way to go. And as always, you'll find all the links in the more info as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, 
happy flashing